In this tutorial, we will look at how to configure an Appian web or mobile project. We will look at one simplified configuration. There are many different scenarios which would then affect how you would configure your project. But in this particular example, we will be deploying to a .NET server, which is Microsoft IIS. We have a simple application and therefore can use the configuration wizard instead of doing a manual configuration. The application does not use any web services. It's a database driven application that connects to an ODBC data source. And we will configure our application for deployment to a local server on the same Windows computer as the Power Builder IDE. When you open Power Builder, make sure you run it as administrator. You can run Power Builder as administrator by right clicking on the Power Builder application and selecting Run as Administrator. This will open up your Power Builder IDE with the Appion toolbar. The Appion toolbar provides a set of tools to configure, analyze, deploy, and test your web or mobile application. In this tutorial, we will be configuring an application that we have just developed. The first step is to add the application to your workspace in the Power Builder IDE. This is my ready to go application. This application is quite simple. It has one application object, one data window, and one window. It's simply to illustrate the process to configure the application with Appian. When we look at the application object, we can see that it's connecting to the DSN Appian sample, which is an ODBC data source with the user ID and password DBA SQL. This application has one window with one grid data window and two buttons. So now what we need to do is to configure this application for deployment with Appian. We click on the first icon which is the configuration wizard. For advanced projects you can manually configure the application by clicking the second icon. But as mentioned in this tutorial, we will be looking at a simplified example. So we select the configuration wizard, we click next, and we provide an application name. In this case, we will call it the same as the application, which is test. It will automatically populate the web folder name with the same name. If this name is not short and simple, we recommend to then change the web folder name to something that's easier to type because this will form the basis of the application URL that will be used to run the web application or to download and install the mobile application from your server. For the project type, we will select Universal, which will generate both a web and a mobile target. If it's a web-only application, then we can select web, or mobile-only, we select mobile. But in this case, we will do a universal application. When selecting universal or mobile for the project type, you will need to specify a device type. You can run on smartphones only, tablets, or you can run on both. In this case, our application is simple and will display properly on a small screen or a large screen, so we will select both. By default, the mobile application name will be the same as the application profile name. This is the name that will appear underneath the icon for this application on your mobile device. This is case sensitive, and we recommend you modify this in a way 
that looks professional uh, to be viewed by your end users. So in this case, we will just simply capitalize the T and type in the word app, test application. We can specify our own custom icon for the mobile application. If you do not have a mobile icon, then Appion will automatically assign a default. But we strongly recommend you assign your own custom icon to differentiate your application. So we select Browse, and we navigate to where the icon is stored. We can see the icon, which is 86 pixels by 86 pixels. We recommend your icon is this size so that it will render properly without any distortions. However, Appion will automatically resize an icon image in a different size. We can also provide a description for the mobile application. If you're deploying your application with the Appion workspace, then below the icon, the application description will appear. For a standalone mobile application, this description will be ignored. I have typed a description for the mobile application, and now I can proceed to click Next. I will need to select the Power Builder target that we plan to deploy as an Appion web or mobile project. And by default, it will select the correct version of Power Builder that you're using. And it will automatically add any pibbles contained in the application target. We recommend you keep this box checked. This will automatically update this configuration with any new pibbles that you add to this application target in the future. Click Next. As mentioned in this tutorial, we will be doing a simplified deployment to a local server. If you have multiple servers configured in your Appian developer, then you'll be able to select the other servers in the dropdown and deploy to those servers as a default. Click Next. This is a database-driven application, so we will need to select a database type. And you can see Appian supports many different databases. In this example, we're using Sybase ASA, which has already been configured. If we double click, we can see that it connects to the Appian sample ODBC data source. If we click Test Connection, you can see that the database tests successfully. We can also configure a native interface instead of ODBC and connect that way. Be sure if you're using the ODBC interface to configure a 32-bit ODBC connection. The ODBC connection should be configured underneath the system DSN. This is very important so that Appion can find it and so that Power Builder can connect since Power Builder is a 32-bit platform. Now we click OK and we check the box to specify that we will be using this type of database for this particular application and we click Next. This is where Appion is different from a traditional Power Builder applications. It's really one of the only things different from a traditional Power Builder development. All other aspects of development with Appion remain unchanged. What we need to do is configure a server-side data source. Unlike Power Builder, Appion is an end-tier architecture where the database connection is made on the server side. So we will need to map the Power Builder transaction object to a server-side data source. We will click Add, and we will need to type in our transaction object name. 
by default, SQL CA has already been entered. If you are not using SQL CA, please change this. Then we'll need to select the database type. In this example, we're using the Sybase SQL Anywhere database. For a Java application server, you will need to manually type the data source name. This is case sensitive, and please make sure you type it correctly. For a .NET server deployment, it's actually much simpler to do this configuration. You simply select the Appion server, and it will display a list of data sources that are already configured in your .NET server. You can add your own database connection by clicking Add, and provide a name for your database connection on the server side, in this case, test. Select the appropriate driver. We are using the ODBC driver. Select the ODBC data source. In this case, we have configured in the 64-bit ODBC administrator the database connection is SQL Anywhere. It's very important that you use the 64-bit ODBC data administrator and you specify the DSN underneath the System DSN tab. Otherwise, Appian will not be able to find your database connection. So we select the Appian sample for a server. We type in the username and the password. Okay. You can leave all of these as defaults unless you're deploying to a production environment, in which case you may want to optimize these settings. We recommend keeping connection pooling checked to improve the scalability and performance of the server side. There are rare situations where you may not want to check this, and in those situations then you would simply uncheck this box. This is a simplified connection where the username and password is static. However, if we wanted to, we could select dynamic database connection in which case, each individual end user's username and password will be used to establish the database connection. Once we've completed this configuration, we click Test to verify the database connection has been configured correctly. We click OK, and now you can see in your .NET server, the test database connection has been created. We click the radio button to populate the data source name in the data source field. And we click OK. You can now see that SQL CA in Power Builder has been mapped to the test data source, which is a SQL Anywhere database type. We click Next. We need to specify the folder that contains any image files used by the application. In this case, the default folder has been populated. If the folder contains any images in subfolders, then you should check the subfolders box and click Next. If the application contains any INI files, then you want to click Add File and select the INI. If your application uses more than one INI file, simply repeat this step and click Next. For web applications, you have the option to embed OCX controls or any client-side DLLs. For web or mobile applications, you can include other external files, for example, a PDF or any file that must be deployed along with your application to the client side or the mobile device. To add a file, click Add File, and you select the DLL or OCX for the web application, any text file, image files, or any other files such as a PDF for your web or mobile application. In this example, we're not using any client side files, so we can skip this step and we click Next. If the Deploy Application Now box has been checked, when you click the Finish button, it will perform a deployment 
and analysis of your application. We recommend to check this box and click Finish. This process could take a few minutes depending on your application's size. This concludes the tutorial for how to configure your Appian web or mobile project.